Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jeremy, and you're listening or watching episode number seven of Backstage Career, the podcast where I interview the people who are working behind the scenes with some of the biggest creators and entrepreneurs out there. In today's episode, I talked to Richard Reese, who is the founder of a fast-growing website called Most Recommended Books, and he's also one of the most connected people I know. Uh, in this episode, just to give you a sneak preview, he shares the story of how he got Jamie Foxx on Tim Ferriss' podcast. If you listen to that episode, uh, Richard was the guy behind it. Number two, he shares the story of how he regularly plays soccer with Ronaldo, the soccer legend, and why Ronaldo is the reason that he has 90,000 followers on Instagram. Number three, he shares the story of how he bumped into Drake at a restaurant and managed to get into one of his house parties. This was an amazing episode. I included timestamps in the description below in case you feel like skipping to the parts that interest you most. Um, I hope you enjoy. Let's dive in. But like I found out that you actually, instead of going to college, uh, you decided to go work with your dad uh, to build, I mean, to start a movie studio. I don't know if you had started or not, but like to, to, to work with him on a movie studio in LA. And I think you did that for five years, right? So I think that's like, yeah. might be a good point to start off. Yeah. So I, I never really grew up with my father. So when he started a, a, the small movie studio in Los Angeles, like where he would invest and produce, uh, invest in and produce movies, uh, I was like, oh, this, this will be a good chance to like, you know, uh, be near him and learn from him and, you know, um, and, and just kind of get to, to, to spend more time with him. And uh, so when I came to the U.S., um, obviously the plan was to 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 stay in college, and so so I went to college here. But as he was building the movie business, I was kind of trying to like play my part, but it, it would conflict with the college side of things, where um, sometimes like my father would say, "Oh, we're going to have a meeting with Netflix today, or we're going to have a meeting with Sony." And, and, and I was like, oh, I can't go because I have to go to, to, you know, math class or I have to go to whatever lesson I, I had that day. And, 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 and I was kind of missing out on the real world uh, experience, you know, like seeing how do they negotiate uh, at these companies, which to me was, was, was another world and, and, see, and, and meeting the people and learning from them directly and learning from my father directly. So after a while of this, I, I was like, I felt like I was giving up on this, you know, once in a lifetime type of opportunity. So I, I had to choose. It, it was either, it, it couldn't be both. I was trying to do both. Uh -huh. So it's like either you focus on college or you focus on, on this. So obviously I, I, I went with the, the uh, movie business side of things, which in retrospect was a good idea. But back then it was kind of scary, especially, you know, because my mom was like, don't do that. Um, but it, it felt like, it felt like I, I, had to do it and now i look back i'm like thankful that i did it you know uh but back then man it was scary so you were in freshman in college when you dropped out i don't even know what freshman yeah i was like four months into it or something wow like it, okay it, it was yeah it, it, it didn't take four maybe six so your so you, your dad how, how old was this business was your dad just starting it or was he no, was like a, a startup couple, well, it was a startup and what um you guys, you guys produced distributed movies. It, so, what exactly started, were you guys doing? Yeah, it started with this uh, this group of people who had a deal with Sony to finance five uh, straight to DVD movies every year, and uh, the deal didn't grow go through because the group of people ran out of, of money. They needed a, a, a an investor, so one of the guys from that group um, met my father and um and told him about the deal and my dad said well I'll, I'll i'll do the investing if it's just me and you and we we get rid of the rest of the group which was basically what he did so like um so then he 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 took over the deal he kept one of the guys from the deal and the the idea was just finance five movies with sony every year which which should be simple but then the more you go into Hollywood, the more you, you meet these producers and directors and the more projects you start hearing about. So what started as just financing movies turned into 
uh, co-producing, which we did with these uh, three, what do you call it? Like uh, festival movies, you know, those like three hour long. Uh, like the Sundance. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, we did the a Sundance. Um, I forgot the other names, but, but we did three of those basically. And then we did one which was finance produced and distributed by us. So it went from just finance to finance and produce to finance producing and distributing, you know, so that, that was basically the, that was like a four year journey that felt like 40, you know, it was, a <laughs> lot, it was a lot going on, but it was fun. You know, like you, you meet a lot of very interesting people. And, um, and were, were you basically like your dad's co-founder in a sense? Or were you kind of like apprenticing under him? Like, how how did that relationship work? Like, what were what were you doing exactly? It was, it was like a. It's funny because it was kind of like a startup where it was uh, my father at the top, and then he had the the guy from the group as CEO, and then you had me as like everything else, which was you're the hustler. Yeah, like the intern slash. You know, uh, uh, I had to 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 arrange the meetings and I had, to, and, and, but I would go to the meetings and then I had to read all the scripts, you know, like they, they would send a lot of scripts. So I had to read all the scripts and, and uh, that was kind of my, my, my day to day was um, learning and, and, and um, how do you say it? Operating at a, at a basic level. It's kind of like you said, the hustler is kind of a good word for that. Uh-huh. You know, it's kind of like doing everything else that needs to be done. And, uh, that that was fun and then my role just kept growing uh as time went on so but it started with just like and and it still was like we would do everything it was three people you know and and making these these big movies so it it was like we all kind of did a little bit of everything you know so it it really was a a movie startup it still is it still exists you know we just haven't done a a project in in a long time but it's 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 still basically a startup, you know. It's it's a yeah. it's like a, you take a Sony, and you look at what they do, and it is basically investing, producing, and distributing, but at a very high level, you know. It's a yeah. global thing. With us, it was a very small level, but but that just means it was a ton of work. It was a lot, a lot to be done. There was one time where I had to go to New York, and make sure that all the 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 theaters where our movie was going to be shown, I had to make sure our posters were in, so in, in every theater. Yeah. So I had to like, Hey, can I speak to the manager? Yeah. So this is my movie and we want the poster here. So like small things like that, all the way to like meeting with Netflix and talking to, to the people there or talking to the people at Sony. Um, so that, that was kind of, it, it was a bit of everything like, like crazy, crazy stuff. And so you, what do you do after so after leaving Hollywood, um, I wanted to do something. I, I always had this little interest in tech, yeah. um, but I, but mostly what I didn't like about working in Hollywood was how many moving pieces there are. You know, it's like, if you want to make a movie, you need the script, uh, you need the investors, you need a producer, they're going to need location people, makeup people. You know, you need the actors. It's it's a gigantic, even for a low budget movie, it's a gigantic operation. Mm. And I I didn't like that at all. Um, it's too many moving pieces, and 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 I don't like like you lose control really easy. If if the director doesn't agree with you on on something, then then it's it's a, a whole issue, and that happens all the time. So I wanted something where I could just sit at my laptop and code something, put it out there and let the people decide. Um, and tech became something I was interested in. I, I started coding pretty late in life. I started coding at age 23. Um, I had studied a little bit in Hollywood, but it wasn't a focus. So then I decided, you know what, let me just like jump in 100% and packed all my stuff and left uh, to Silicon Valley, moved into a, a hacker house which is like a, a, a house with like three bedrooms and 20 people living in. Uh, so, it, but it was cool because everyone at the hacker house were um, like engineers from, from Google. Like we had people from, people from NASA, 
we had people who worked at Facebook. Like we, it was such an interesting group of of people. Have you ever watched the TV show Silicon Valley? Yeah, yeah. Was, that was it. You know, it, it was just like <laughs> it was multiplied by you know way more people. Uh, but it was super interesting to me because it's like I was learning how to code, deeply immersed in the world where everyone else was a programmer and some people had had learned when they were 10 you know so so it was cool because as i'm learning whenever i was stuck with something i would just turn left and ask for advice and and that was that was a a really cool oh yeah it was great and and i liked it more than um even though when i say hollywood is more fun it's more fun but it's but i liked the, the Silicon Valley aspect more because it's I can just build something, put it out there and let the people decide versus depending on, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people and, and they depend on me. And that that was a lot of pressure. Where, whereas now I moved to 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 Silicon Valley where it's like it's not as many people. It's just you and your laptop. But that is good for, for my personality. And from there, how, how do you get to most recommended books? Oh yeah. Um, so one of my best friends, Anurag, after uh, I, I wrote this blog post called "How to Think Like a Programmer," and it just went everywhere. It just it exploded. It's it's. Do you know Free Code Camp or, or, or no. Medium? So like it's it's one of the top ten blog posts on Medium, and it's the number one blog post on Free Code Camp. I don't know how it happened, but it just happened. And then my <laughs> my friend Anurag was like. Oh, this is cool. Like we have matching skills. Like you can, you can make something go everywhere and, and I can build stuff really quickly. And, you know, like we can match our skills and, and build something cool. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, we, we should try that, but we should establish a rule, which is put something out there. If it doesn't, if it, if it doesn't do well after a month, one to three months, it can kind of get the feeling, um, kill it, move on to the next thing. You know, and, and that was the idea. It was like, try something. If it's not a hit, switch. If it's not a hit, switch. And uh, we did that. We did one project. It wasn't a hit. After a month, we kind of kill it. Second project, before we even put it out there, we could tell it was going to be tricky. Third project, most recommended books. And most recommended books was funny because after we put it out there, I kind of started working on my own project because I, I, I like finance and I blogged about finance. And I was like, oh, there's you could build some cool finance apps to help people with their finances. But as I was working on the finance app, it was costing more and more money each month. Like the more people signed up, the more it was cost, the, the more the cost would go up, obviously. And, uh, and uh, I, I was like, well, I could either raise money, but no one knows me. So like if I raise money right now, it's going to be at a bad valuation. You know, it's probably going to be some dentist, angel investor, you know, like I, I don't want to raise money from... <laughs> Yeah, like I, I, I want to do it. I, I want to like do it the right way, and yeah. I don't want. I, I like the finance project so much that I don't want to risk it. But um, so I was like, mm, I should probably put this aside and maybe work on it in the future. At that exact moment, I look at this most recommended books thing that we put out. We didn't kill it, and six months afterwards. I, I saw the data and each month there were more users, more money, you know? So, and I wasn't doing anything. I had totally forgotten about this project and Anurag had totally forgotten about this project, but we didn't kill it. We just left it there. And six months later, I look at the data and it's growing, growing, growing. And I was like, oh my God. And it's making money, you know, and, and it's profitable. So I'm like, oh my God, this is cool. I don't have to raise money for this. Um, and I can And I can build this thing and learn a lot thanks to it so i decided to like put everything else aside and focus 100 percent on on most recommended books and uh, see like okay if, if i just put everything i have into this how 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 much can it grow and it's still growing so it's been it's been a year now it's been a little over a year now and it's still growing 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 you know so that's the that's what's cool about this it, it, it was such a organic unplanned thing you know yeah when people talk about the uh, Babe Ruth calling his shot, and this was totally not that. Like I yeah. didn't, I didn't see that happening. It was just a try, try, try. You know, put a bunch of projects, see which ones are hits, and then just just focus on that. 
and and that's kind of like a, I, I joke that like most recommended books was was discovered. It wasn't built. It was discovered. <laughs> it just that just happened. So so now I'm focused on, on that a hundred percent. That's awesome, dude. And um, what like how many users do you have right now? Like like a monthly active or whatever you use to track. Monthly active is it's like seventy thousand. Oh wow! Something like that. It's 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 up there. Yeah, like the the. However, we differentiate between like people who sign up and people who who visit the website because there's there's two sides to our our um, our business. Uh, one is like because you know how how most recommended books is right. We show yeah. the books books recommended by like Tim Ferriss and Elon. So that's one side where it's like people Google Elon Musk books. And yeah. finding us. The other side, which is what we just started, is okay. Now you see Elon's list, you see Tim's list. Now you can create your own list, and that's kind of what we're focused on now. You know, so so there's 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 two different businesses, and and it's it's it's. I'm kind of having a hard time um, merging them. Yeah, you know, I can imagine. But it, but it's getting better each month because we just released the the thing where anyone can create an account. You know, so so mixing them both is 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 tricky right now, but it's getting better and better each week. You know, so that's that's um that's the main focus. Hell yeah, man! Hopefully, you you guys uh you guys can pay your the co-founder to bring to bring him on full time soon. <laughs> yeah, the 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 thing about most recommended books was never a like when we started originally when my co-founder said, oh, we should build something together. We uh, the goal was like you know you can make a few hundred extra bucks a month like we didn't plan on this being a full time startup thing it's kind of like my blog it's like just make a few hundred extra bucks a month and and you're happy right like this this is I didn't think that just putting a bunch of people's book lists out there would make more than a few hundred dollars a month you know mm. and 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 then it was like okay it it did that okay can we get to a few thousand okay it did that. Okay, can we get to a few tens of thousands? You know, so it's kind of like it, it, it keeps it keeps um, how do you say surprising me at, at yeah. each step. Like it's it surprised me for the last year. You know, so so I don't know how how far it can go, but the the ideal goal for this is don't raise money. You know, like the, 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 this is not the the like you know unicorn type raise as much money as you can and and, and build something that. Use this as kind of a um, uh, how do you say? Have you have, have you read Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week? Yeah. So that's kind of the idea. It's kind of like he he talks about the concept of a muse. Yeah. You know, just something that is out there and it's paying for your lifestyle and your friend's lifestyle and and so kind of most recommended books is kind of the muse. You know, like that we're trying to create something that allows us to do other things. You know, and and that's basically what it's becoming. You know, and and it's it's already exceeded expectations. So now it's like, okay, let's increase expectations. You know, so at some point, you know, it's 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 gonna it's gonna stop. But so far, it's it's each month, it's it's just growing, growing, growing. So keep going in that direction. Um, I want to ask you about um, just connecting with uh, people that you look up to, like. I think we I, we we met because you're invited to dinner with like uh, with my boss like Noah Kagan, um, and I think you you met via his friend right um, Neville, Neville, which which you took his course and I think you 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 probably learned a lot from him, and mm-hmm. I mean you're friends with Jamie Fox, um, like I'm curious like what like what is it about you that like how, like how, how do you connect with these people right because like I think it's it's not it's not common for for anyone to 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 connect with uh, the people they look up to so yeah what would you have to share around that it's um i forget where i learned this but, but it's like always trying to bring them va- so like you bring them value so like you look at with jamie we didn't connect because i was trying to befriend him we connected because we were going to work on a project together um with ferris like we didn't connect because I was trying to befriend him or, or I was trying to get him as a mentor. We connected because I, I thought that interviewing Fox would be beneficial to, to his podcast. And I thought that um, 
being on Tim's show would be beneficial to Fox too, mm. because um, the the Tim Ferriss effect is, is this crazy. Like Fox didn't believe because because Fox is like, oh, podcasts, like you know, uh, what is this? Like who cares? Um, I was like, no, no, trust me, trust me. This is this is cool. This is a this is a. a, a it, it was kind of new, and I was like, no, this is a big deal. Uh, I didn't even know who Joe Rogan was at the time, you know. So so it, it was like podcast was. It wasn't brand new, but it, it wasn't like this huge mainstream thing, you know, where, where Bernie Sanders is being interviewed by Joe Rogan now. Yeah. You know, back then it was it wasn't that. So so I was like, no, no, trust me, it's it's cool, and uh, and he did it, and. I st- like we we would go to restaurants. Uh, there was one time we went to a restaurant, and like the 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 person working there came up to Jamie and said, "Like Jamie, I I listened to your Tim Ferriss interview, and, and oh my god, like he changed my life. It was amazing." I was like, "It's funny because it's like he, he said it's like he had a movie out, you know? It's like <laughs> yeah. you, uh, you know when you have a new movie out, everyone's like, oh man, that was great. Like what you did, and it felt like he had a movie because everywhere we'd go, people would." stop him and be like that Tim Ferriss interview oh my god it was amazing it was great you know so so with connecting with these people I always try to you know bring something to them yeah yeah so so it's always trying to what can I do for them that they would be thankful for you know and and that's kind of what I what I um try to do with with meeting the the people you listed so like um Neville uh Who's, I who's the his founder course. of copywriting? Yeah, co- copywriting course. You you join his mm-hmm. course, and then how, how how do you guys connect, like personally? Well, I joined his course. Well, you know, bring something to him. So so like I joined the course. So obviously I I paid the fee. So but then we we the cool thing about his course is that like once every week or two weeks we would have a Zoom call. So um, it, it's it's him giving advice to this group of people, and and I was one of the people. And I was always asking questions about uh, um, copy because he's really good at copy. So like for most recommended books is copy, SEO. He's very good at SEO. So I was always asking these questions. And uh, one day he, 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 one of the calls is like, oh, I'm, I'm here in LA. I'm in Malibu. And I'm like, I'm in LA. It, it was last summer, you know, <laughs> and I was like, what? You're in LA? So am I. Uh, we, we, we should hang out. And then we, we ended up hanging out and he was with Noah. So, so it, it was just like a, a, the Noah thing was, was by luck, but obviously I knew of Noah before, you know, so it was a cool, cool connection, you know? Um, but yeah, like, like it, it all started because I joined his course and every call I was there, you see some yeah. people who like they do three calls and then they, the they drop out, out. Yeah. every single call I was there, you know, and, and I really took it seriously. So, so that was, uh, we, we connected, uh, um, o- over that, you know? Yeah, add value. That's the punchline. Always. Yeah, because these people, yeah. Like they, they they get asked for favors all the time, but you have to like kind of what can you do for them? You know, it, it's it's a it's just a basic basic principle that I always try to, you know. And and obviously like you can't always do it because cause like it's not like I've met everyone. You know, but whenever I can, you know, like try to add some value, like do something for, for them, and 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 it builds something more organic and stronger than if you just, you know, if you ask for a tweet, they might tweet you, but it, it doesn't build, you know, a strong core. So always add value. You know this well. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you work with Tom and Noah, so yeah, this is a new. <laughs> It's, it's, it's always, I don't know. I, 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 what I'm trying to do with the podcast is like, just collect these stories, you know? Cause like, I think there's so many, it, like adding value, it's like a simple thing, but it's also like a very complex thing, right? Like, <laughs> like the way you, you made the, the Tim Ferriss show, uh, interview happen, like that was like a very subtle operation, right? And I'm just a fan of collecting these stories of like, oh, like how, how, how did you connect with this person? You know, like how did you help this person out? And mm. and uh, just to to kind of like spark inspiration in other people of like how how these things um, how these things happen. Plus, uh, there's always a good story because you, you 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 need to be super creative um, to make it happen, right? So it's like yeah, yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. At, at what point did you did you meet Jamie Fox and how did that happen? 
oh, we met because one friend introduced me to a friend who had this idea for a movie project. And Jamie was one of the actors he, he wanted to, to uh, uh, be part of that movie. So, uh, so, so then we get introduced to Jamie's right-hand guy, Dave. And, and Dave says, oh, yeah, like this, this would be a cool project. We should talk to, to Fox. And uh, that's, how, that's how we met originally. It was we wanted to work on a project together. Um, but then we just ended up becoming friends. <laughs> like it, it, it's, yeah, I can't say where we like, but we, we, it started as a business thing, right? But it, it just ended up becoming a friendship. And, and the more it developed, the more it was like, oh man, we got along a lot. This is fun. Like, and we kept talking, yeah, yeah, we'll do a project. We, we might still do a project, <laughs> you know, somewhere in the future, but we, we just developed this really cool friendship and, and it's, it's endured um, all these years. One, one thing is uh, how you got Jamie Foxx on uh, Tim Ferriss's podcast. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I really, I mean, first of all, that episode was like when, I, when it came out, that was like, whoa, I think it was the, the best podcast episode of the year voted by iTunes or something like that. Yeah, and I mean, when I listened to it, I was blown away. And, and, and then when we met last summer and I found out that like you were behind that interview, I was like, holy <laughs> shit, <laughs> it was so cool. So I wanted to hear the story of like how, how, that, how you made that happen. Yeah, I was a huge Tim fan. I still am, of course. Like I, I, was, I was listening to all his uh, um, interviews. Yeah. I listened to every single one. And And I liked that his interviews were not gotcha interviews. Like he wasn't trying to get the the interviewee to say something that would compromise them later. Yeah. And I love that he would try to figure the person out. You know, it's like, okay, what do you do when you wake up? What what do you eat for breakfast? Like, what are your habits? What are your principles? And and I was like, okay, he he's asking people questions that, you know, I I I you wouldn't ask your friend, you know, but I'm like, I, I would love to know these things about Fox because Fox is one of the most interesting people in, in, like that I've met. I've met so many people, like, especially in Hollywood, you, you meet, especially working in Hollywood, you meet every celebrity, but there was just something about Jamie that just made him different. And, and I was like, I got to figure that like, he, he's the most talented guy, you know, like he can act, he can play, uh, he, he's a musician, he's an actor, he does comedy. And his, his intelligence is so interesting. Like he's a better chess player than, than I am, which really makes me, angry. you know, like I was the best chess player in school. I was the captain of the chess team. I'm really good at chess and, and he's better. And I'm like, okay, what is this guy? Like, let me, let me figure him out, you know, cause, cause there's just something there. And, uh, and I thought, you know, the perfect person to, to, to do this would be Tim, you know, cause, cause he'll get to ask him all the questions. So, and, and there's another thing about Fox, which is his storytelling yeah. is just, yeah. See, like, like he, he has this. And if I ask him, he's like, yeah, I think that that's my gift. It's the, the art of storytelling because I used to think that. You know, like uh, being in Hollywood and, and, and being around celebrities, you, you quickly notice that every celebrity is hilarious. Like you're in the room with them. Whatever they say, everyone's going to laugh about it. You know, yeah. everyone's going to be. And I thought that, that that's what it was with Jamie. But it's not because I've seen Jamie in the room with other celebrities. And, and you could say people who are, uh, quote unquote, more famous than him or, or whatever. But he will always take over the room. Like he will hypnotize you. Like he, he's just, he, he, there could be anyone else in the room. He, he will, he will own the room. Like I, I've never seen something like that. I've seen him with picture any big name celebrity. And, and I've seen the celebrity trying to do what Fox is doing. because Fox kind of takes over the room and then the celebrity will try to act the way he does and, and be as funny, but it just, doesn't work yeah and i'm like what is What's he... the x factor yeah what is it right so i was like i can't figure it out let me get a pro you know so i reach out to tim 
and uh, it, it was a funny, I was like, I don't know if they're going to answer, but I was like, would you guys like to, to interview Jamie Foxx? Did you just email him or do you tweet at him? Or No, I emailed. I emailed um, his, his assistant and I don't know if they believed me at first. But then I sent like pictures. I was like, no, no, seriously, like, like we should make this happen. It would be awesome. And it took me about six, seven months to to make it happen, because because it's hard with like Jamie's uh, uh, um, schedule, and it, it, it's kind of hard to like, you know, this is going to be a two hour interview. I need you to be here for two hours. So I had to literally go to LA and be like, text everyone around Jamie and say like, don't add anything to his schedule please don't take him anywhere you know like just just let me do this thing with him for two hours i think it was more or for i, I said for one hour but it ended up being more because they they got along so well yeah you know? so so but but i was like please like just i had to physically be there and then and then um jamie kind of lives like you know far away from the the city he lives like 40 minutes away from LA. So when I told Tim, I'm like, oh yeah, you should like, this is the address. It was kind of like, uh -huh, like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> He's like, it's okay. it like, is this like a, like a scam yeah. or something like that? <laughs> and the assistant was like, yeah, I was ready with, uh, cause Jay, uh, cause Tim knows a few Navy SEALs. So in case he went missing, I, I really knew what to do. <laughs> I was like, that. <laughs> And I was like, no, it's fine. Like, just tell him go go to this address at this time, <laughs> like in the middle of nowhere. Um, but it went great, and 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 it was, it happened so well. Where um, it was in Jamie's studio, and the piano was like his piano was like right here. So as Jamie is telling uh, uh, his stories, he's also playing the piano. He's acting the parts. And I could tell Tim was kind of like, uh, um, he, he kept checking the equipment to make sure that it was recording. You know? He's like, I don't want to miss this. So it, it just went perfectly. It was supposed to be an hour. It ended up being like two hours. And and then, like, I didn't expect this, but it, it was Tim's biggest. Uh, um, I think it still is like his number one in terms of uh, of listens and how many uh, how many times it's been played. I think it still is his his number one podcasts of, of all time so you know that went fantastically well and tim's a great guy and we we ended up getting along you know and those two got along which which was awesome to me and you can see in the interview kind of i like that tim did this which was like deconstructing fox you know asking the right questions knowing like okay why why are you good at telling stories why are you good at music where did this come from like what what makes you like this yeah and and it was it was just great to listen and, and you can tell a lot of people liked it as well so so that made me happy you have like a lot of instagram followers where do you did you uh, where do you get those that was a uh, uh, ronaldo so like we, we were hanging out once and then he we took a picture together he posted it on his instagram he tagged me i had 60 followers he tags me <laughs> <laughs> holy shit he posts, he's the most followed person on instagram so it's like he's the number one he tags me he goes on my photos and he likes all my photos and this was back when on instagram if someone likes a photo <laughs> you would see it so from there holy shit <laughs> i got like eighty thousand followers but it was just him like i i never post on the instagram post thing like i i don't i'm not good with social media but that Instagram thing was just him, basically. And he was laughing. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, ha watch this. <laughs> and, and my phone was like, holy shit. I was like, that's insane. Uh, but yeah, none of it was me. Because I like, other than medium, medium, I could say it, it was me. Yeah. Like, I have like, I think it was like 9,000 followers on medium or something. But that was from me. Yeah. Like, yeah, blogging. grinding like like one year blogging every yeah. every week or more that one even. I can right? say it was me. Yeah, I was yeah. purposely aiming for that, but Instagram it wasn't like no nah, Instagram. I was just so how how I mean you just dropped the the bomb of like uh, just hanging out with Ronaldo. <laughs> how did that happen? Oh, we have a we have a, a mutual friend, Miguel. Like he he's a he's a he's the probably the best dentist in the world. He, he's, he, he, he's, um, 
this Portuguese guy. And when I lived in LA, uh, he, he stayed at my house for, cause he was going to LA. He was going to spend a month there. I was alone in LA and my dad was like, Oh, I have a friend who's going to, who's, who's coming to LA. Uh, he, he's going to stay at the house. You guys should hang out. Cause I was alone. And I was like, Oh, cool. Okay. Someone's going to a month, a month. That's a long time, dad. Like I'm going to have to live with a stranger for a month. But Miguel's like the coolest guy. Like <laughs> he, he arrived that day. He's like, hi, I'm Miguel. And we just got along so well, you know, like he, he became like a brother and he's also friends with Ronaldo. So when Real Madrid came to town, uh, uh, they were staying at the, the, um, a hotel that was like near, uh, uh, where I lived. It was like 10 minutes away. And, uh, my friend and Miguel was like, Oh, Real Madrid is in town. Like, uh, do you want to meet them? Like, it would be cool. Like you guys hanging out. And so then I was like, yeah, heck yeah. It'd be great to meet them. And then we just, we became friends. So every time Real Madrid would come to town, they would come to my house and we'd go like a little party or something and have some people over and just have fun. You know, we, we just became friends and, yeah. and then the Instagram thing happened and I was like, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, do you have Instagram? I'm like, yeah, but I only have like, six. I never use Instagram. I only have 60 followers. He's like, what's your Instagram? <laughs> I, like, uh, I wonder how many people he's done that to. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. If you, if you look at his circle of friends, they, they, they all have like, yeah, like, like 100,000 100, followers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They hang out with him more. I only see him when he comes to the US. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, but like our friends who live in, in Europe. It's like they, they have like hundreds of thousands of followers. It's like this this guy. It's like you're an a, influencer overnight. <laughs> yeah, he's the influencer of influencers. I call him yeah. King of Kings because he really like, in terms of interesting people that I've met, this is also why I like Fox, you know, like the, the, there's, I've met, you name them, except for Eminem, who's one person I really want to meet. I've never met. Except for Eminem, I've met pretty much everyone. But the most interesting people... Uh, I, I, you know, I really try to connect with them. And, and Ronaldo is one of these guys where just being around him, I don't know what it, like, whatever you believe in, it's like, it's like the world becomes smaller when yeah. you're in the same room as him. It, it's kind of like possibilities become endless. He, he, he kind of makes me understand like these great leaders of the past you know, like, yeah. the, like Alexander, people would give their life for Alexander and what was mm. about his charisma. And, and when you're there with, with Ronaldo, I'm like, Oh, I get it. You know, like this guy just has this, it's, it's like I'm around him and my luck, whatever my luck level is, it goes up. It's like suddenly I'm around him and some business deal goes through and I get some notification. It's like, Oh, this business deal or, or, you know, this, this, whatever it is. Something happened. I'm like, well, this is so real. I know it sounds crazy, but it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind this- of goes. It kind of goes uh, along the lines of that that book we were talking about, right? Where it's like the stuff that's like, it's like hard to believe, but it's uh, it's. Uh, I, I have a I have a story on this where we were in Miami, and he he um, so we we rented. This is public. Like you, you there's photos out. So we rent yeah. this boat. He rents the boat. I don't know we. Uh, he runs the boat. We go out into the, the um, like the Miami uh, Bay or whatever, and um, it's just us, group of friends. And then we we stop at a like I don't know if it's a river or something, but we we go away from the ocean into this river, and we're just chilling. They stop the boat so that we can relax because the sun is coming down, and uh, one guy is like, uh, I think someone was like, oh, maybe we should go swimming uh, in the water. And and one guy was like, no, 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 don't do that because there's crocodiles here. And as soon as I heard crocodiles, I'm like, I'm not going in that water. You know, I am not going in that water. And uh, Ronaldo <laughs> jumps in the water. <laughs> and everyone who was like, I'm not going to go in the water because there's crocodiles, the girls were the first to jump after him. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I see him jumping, and I'm, I look to my left, and all the girls are gone, and I'm like, <laughs> and and I'm like, everyone was afraid of the crocodiles two seconds ago. Now everyone's jumping in the water because the irrational belief is like, well, the crocodile's not gonna 
get him. Right? Like nothing's <laughs> yeah. gonna happen. The crocodile is not gonna eat Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna happen. So so it's like it, it sounds crazy, but I jumped in the water. You know, it's like the, the, that's the photo on Instagram. It's all of us in the water, like. <laughs> you know? and that's funny which is crazy because just five minutes ago everyone was like well uh, it's crocodiles here we're not going to jump and and he was kind of like this guy who's like oh come on you guys are stop being you know babies come on <laughs> <laughs> he jumps and suddenly everyone else forgot that there's crocodiles and everyone jumped and i'm like it sounds crazy when you describe it it's like you yeah idiot, why would you do that but if you were there in that moment you're like yeah, nothing's going to happen and nothing happened. And, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, you look back and you're like, I was such an idiot. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's hard to describe. It's like, okay, now I get how, you know, people would risk their lives while Alexander, you know. Alexander it's like you're, say, no, you're kind no. of like in, intoxicated on their charisma. Almost, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's something about, yeah. Intoxicated on the charisma is a good one because Alexander would go against bigger armies and it's like, Fuck, we're going to die. Like this army is bigger than our army. But they won. And it's like, how did they, you know, <laughs> what? Th this makes no sense. How did they win? And it was just something to being around these people where I'm like, yeah, I get it now. Like, like I, I've been around someone who, weirdly enough, it's like the laws of physics don't apply to this guy. When, when I'm around him, I'm like, how do you, what is it? What is it about you? You know, and, and, and yeah. I try to figure him out. I, I want Ferris to interview him as well. Because I'm like that. That I, I want to figure. Dude, it out. make it happen. <laughs> the world, the in world will thank you for it. Was that? <laughs> yeah, I, I, if he was... I tried. He, he's in Europe, right? So it's like yeah. I want them to be in the same room. The same thing with Fox. I don't want it to be a Zoom call. I want it to be in the same room. Yeah, because it makes it there's more depth to it. Like like the Tim Ferriss and, and Fox interview. That so, that's probably why it was one of the best interviews, right? It's just like the. Uh, yeah. The vibe is just like, I mean, the fact that there's a piano, it's just like totally different. And and Fox, and, and Tim has interviewed, you, you could say it's because Fox is famous, but Tim has interviewed LeBron James and Tim has interviewed some really big names. But Fox was the biggest interview because it's like, I'm telling you, there's something to Jamie. There's just something I've met. I've named them. I have met a lot of these Hollywood names and there's just something to 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 Fox. It's like when, when he turns on the the storytelling charisma it's just like okay how do you do that how how, how mm. can i how can i replicate that and and, and i'm telling there's something to to ronaldo right like and have you watched the jordan documentary yeah 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 so I'm good like, man last dance there's something to that guy too i look at that guy and i'm like hmm there's there's have, so, have you uh, met him I have not met Jordan. No. no, I didn't. Yeah, when I lived in LA, like I, I had a list of people I wanted to meet, and and I met. Oh, dude! Them. So let's get into this. Like, <laughs> like, how, like, like, what you? So you had a list. <laughs> well, because because because, like I said, like I was bullied in school. Yeah, and uh, and it was like girls didn't like me, you know, and guys would make fun of me because every three years I was switching schools. And I was like, man, like this really sucks because like school was from age nine, between nine and 11, no, age 11 till 15 yeah. was just hell because I was getting bullied in school. I was the fat kid, you know, so, so I was okay. getting very bullied. I was getting the crap kicked out of me in school. And then my parents were going through a very rough divorce for years. This was in the US or? This was in uh, Spain. In Spain, I in Spain, okay. And I went to a British school and I went to a Spanish school. And it just was super hard. And I didn't speak the language. I didn't speak Spanish fluently. So, man, school was hard because it's like I'm getting bullied. I'm like the little big kid. And, and, and girls don't like me. And, and, uh, and, and I go home and it's like mom and dad fighting. Like they, they, they were going through the whole divorce thing. So I was like, man, this really... Ah, this sucks. And then I would, I would play a lot of these strategy games. That's all I would do was was play a lot of, of especially the Alexander, the Great game. There was a great Alexander the Great game, and I played oh, nice. that so much. And and I would also like always say, one day I'm just gonna, you know, like I'm gonna hang out with famous people, and 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 I'll show them. Like I'll show these kids, like you know, uh -huh. 
girl who didn't want to go to prom with me. I'm but, <laughs> but, <laughs> so when I got to LA, I was like, this is surreal because now I have access to these people. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I'm like, okay, who do I want to, you know? So, so, so I was like, I want to meet these people. I won't say everyone, but there's a few stories that are more fun. Like, uh, like I really wanted to meet Drake. I was like, I really okay. want to meet Drake. Drake is a, a, cause at that time he was coming. So he was the biggest thing in, 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 in the world. Like his, his, his second or third album came out, which was his biggest take care came out, yeah. which was his biggest album. And I was like, I really want to meet this guy. Like I really want to hang out with him. That'd be great. And lo and behold, I was at a restaurant with a group of friends. And uh, who walks into the restaurant? Drizzy. And I'm like, oh my God, that's Drake. And all my friends were like, oh my God, that's Drake. When, back when Drake was the hottest thing in the world. And um, I was like, I have to go talk to him. I have to go talk to him. I was that guy where I was like, I get up from the table. I walk to Drake's table. And I'm like, I'm just going to ask him for a picture. This is so embarrassing. I say it now. I was like 18, 19. Yeah. And I'm walking to his table and then I feel like someone puts his hands on my chest and I'm like this big bodyguard. <laughs> I'm a pretty tall guy. And the big bodyguard like, where is, did you come from, bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, hey. And, uh, and he's like, where are you going? I'm like, no, I just want to meet Drake. He's like, no, he's having dinner. Don't bother him. And I'm like, no, I just want to ask for a picture. And I had my phone in my hand. And I know that Drake and Jamie are really good friends. You know, uh -huh. when, when Drake was coming up, Jamie really was always like, you know, th throwing parties for Drake. And, you know, Jamie really supported him. Like to this day, Drake uh, refers to Jamie as uh, one of his mentors. You know, yeah. so I know they're, they're, they're very tight. So I was like, oh, this yeah. one, I can tell him like, you know, Jamie, I know Jamie, we should be friends. And <laughs> that didn't work. Uh, so, but I have my phone in my hand. I'm like this 18 year old idiot. And I'm like, no, like, listen, I, I just want to take a photo with him. Like, like I'm friends with Jamie Foxx and he's friends with Jamie Foxx. So we could, we could, you know, be, be buddies. And uh, the security looks at my phone cause I'm holding my phone and the security is like, is Jamie Foxx on the phone right now? I'm like, no, no, no. I, I just want to take a photo. And he's like, no, get out. You know? And, and I'm like, okay, okay. Don't, don't kick my ass. I go back to the table and it's super embarrassing. You know, like all my friends are like, it's okay. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, man, that, that was embarrassing. Like in front of everyone. <laughs> a few minutes later, like Jamie sends a text message. And I tell Fox like, oh, you won't believe what happened. <laughs> and he's like, what happened? I said, I was at the restaurant and I ran into Drake. And Jamie's like, oh, nice. Did you say hi? I'm like, yeah, I tried. But, you know, like his bodyguard was twisting my arm and he was pushing me around the restaurant and he was like beating the crap out of me. You know, like he said he was going to do this and he was going to do that. And he was going to, you know, I was, I was like, uh, um, I, I was like, yeah, no, I, I tried to meet Drake, but the bodyguard was a bit of a dick. And, and, uh, and Fox was like, Oh, give me five seconds. You know, give me five minutes. And he goes on his phone. And then I, I, um, I feel Jamie tapping on my shoulder and I'm like, what's up? And Jamie shows me a text message and it's from Drake saying, Oh, I'm throwing a little party at my house. You guys should, you should come over. And I was like, Fox, <laughs> like, <laughs> Jamie, I've never asked you for a favor and I never do. But, <laughs> and Jamie's like, his house is in, what was it? It was like Calabasas. I didn't know where Calabasas was, but Jamie's like, his house is in Calabasas. Are you sure you want to go there? And I'm like, of course. Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I didn't know that this is like 40 minutes away. And and Jimmy's like, yeah, cool. Let's let's it would be fun. So we get in the car and we're all driving to to Drake's house. And and I'm like, this is so so because I'm 18, you know, and, and, and I'm like or oh, 19. And I'm like, this is so surreal, because if you rewind the clock from that, it, it, this was definitely not happening to me. We get to Drake's house. And, and it's like, uh, Jamie's like, you know, they're, they're really good friends. And Jamie's like, oh, this is my friend. And uh, Drake's like, wait, aren't you the guy who was at the restaurant? And the, the, the security is like, I knew I recognized you. Like, like yeah, <laughs> see, like, I told you. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you I knew Fox. So, so, you know, like, we, we should be friends, you know. And it, it was just a surreal 
experience was suddenly like I'm hanging out with Jamie and Drake at the house and they're talking about music and they're talking about movies. And it was just one of these things where I was like, what just, it was kind of like the matrix was broken, right? Because if you rewinded five years from that, my yeah. life was definitely, 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 definitely not that, you know, it was just, a, it was, it was one of these really bad childhoods, you yeah. know, from, from ages 11 till 15 where as soon as I got to LA, it was like, I'm going to get all of this out of my system, all the partying and all the, you know, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, meet everyone I can meet, you know? So, so that's kind of what, what happened, you know? And, and that, um, the Drake story is, is one of my favorites. Cause it's like, I even look at back at it now and it's, it's, and, and I met him a few times after that, you know, but it's, it's, it's one of these things where it's like, had you asked me when I was 11, you know, no, that's not going to, it's not, I want it to happen, but there was no path towards that, you know, and, and then yeah. you, you fast forward five years and, and I'm meeting these people and it's like, wow, this is, this is what a funny life. You know, it's, it, it was very interesting. Dude, that's such a crazy story. <laughs> I feel like you have like infinite of those stories. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it was, yeah, yeah it's, it's, and and well especially if you live in LA because they all live there you know so yeah. like meeting famous people it's, it's like you, you, you're definitely going to meet some um I think Noah talked about this right he, he was in LA and then he hung out with Fox so it, it's this uh it, it kind of happens in Los Angeles but you know for it to happen to me seeing how I grew up it, it was just like a like oh man like I'm I'm so thankful that that because like high school was it's hard to convey how hard high school was because I, I I basically didn't want to live anymore I was like this is this and and everyone was telling me oh yeah you're gonna look back and you're gonna miss your high school days because high school days are the best days of your life yeah. and, you're gonna look, and I was like I don't want to live that far. yeah this is the best things I don't yeah, want that you know that's and, the worst yeah. I was like, I, I don't want this. Like, th this is the best. Like, it was <laughs> yeah. terrible. We're like, at school, it sucked. And then I go back home and it sucks. And, and I was like, this, what's the point? You know, so so when, when I get to LA, it was kind of like, a, let me get all this stuff out of my I know I have to work and I know I yeah. have to build my own stuff. But let me spend the next five years. Like start just, fresh, yeah. Man, like all the all the pain let me mm, get rid of that yep. energy and just have fun where can people find you online if they want to don't wanna check you out sarkamidabooks.com mbr <laughs> M mrb mrb <laughs> yes most recommended books.com there you have it i hope you got something out of this interview i'm really trying to make this as valuable as possible to you so if you have any feedback on how i can make this better if you have any questions for me personally, I'll get back to you. Uh, reach out to me on Instagram. My handle is at Jeremy John Mary. You can also comment if you're watching on YouTube. You can just comment below. All right, thanks for listening and have an epic week.